Welcome to another episode of the Terry McGriff Show. Just another lovely week, an exciting week for me as we're getting ready to at this weekend to hold the um, first ever Laces Out um, camp and combine for uh, all these young ladies and fo- that's trying to play football. Um, so looking forward to that, man. I'm having a great week so far. And, you know, watched a little basketball for the first time. Got some uh, tournament action in. Even though I was disappointed that my Gators blew that game to Oral Roberts, congratulations to them. But you know, hey, everything's good. I just want to quickly introduce my co-host Andre L. Sullivan, sitting there in the IHA Studios. What's going on, my friend? I'm good because unlike you, I know you said your Gators lost. FSU still in the tourney, so I mean, I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, and you know, uh, I just wanted to let you see that right? I'm I'm repping I'm repping your school today. I'm repping, uh, you know, Young Kids in Motion Academy. I just wanted to make sure you some love, but surprise you a little bit. Let you see, see, see something here. <laughs> I know you remember these. So, yeah, I just wanted to get you, since you're in such a good mood and Florida State is winning and my Gators have, you know, took it on the chin, but it's all good. We still got the show. We still got sports to talk about. So it was a pretty good week. I finally did watch some basketball a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So I got my feel in on that. But we got some other great stuff to talk about this week. Got some really, really good topics. I got to pull them up. I've forgotten. Um, just got a lot of good stuff going on. Um, first thing I want to talk about. Give me a second. Excuse me. Let me get back to. Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about since we got the draft coming up and free agency is in full swing. We're going to get a little bit of NFL. It's going to kind of be NFL heavy today. There's some things that obviously we've seen happen over the weekend. Um, like with the Isaiah Wilson type thing. We're going to talk about all these type of things this week. First topic we're going to talk about, it has the age of the pocket passer ended. Next thing I want to get into, we're going to talk about troubled NFL players and why they blow their careers, or some of them like A.B. almost blew his career. Um, another thing we're going to talk about, the reasons why NFL teams miss on players, whether it be in free agency or in the draft. That's two totally different topics we can talk about. And then uh, one of the things getting into that, what is more important, measure a player's measurables or a player's game film? So we're going to get into these things. We're going to jump right into these, man. So we ain't going to waste no time with it. I want to just jump right in there. Has the, we're going to just put this question out to you. We're going to do like we did last night. Has the age of the pocket passer ended? Um, well, I always preface things with it. Something totally off topic. So mm-hmm. I'd say hopefully everyone by now has watched the play on Disney Channel called Hamilton. Um tell on my to-do list. I haven't forgot. <clears throat> see, see, you missing out, man. That's not <laughs> that's not topic. I'm gonna let that one slide. I'm gonna let that But the literal last line mm-hmm. in the play Hamilton says doesn't matter who lives, who dies. Is who tells your story. And I preface it with that is because you asked the question, has the age of the pocket passer died? It doesn't matter who's in the pocket. It matters who's paying them. And, and, and that's what it what it is. You know, has the age of the pocket passer died? No, not really. Um, I can't I can't say a full yes and I can't say a full no. And because it's it's the job of a general manager is not to get a certain style quarterback. The job of a head coach is not even to have a certain style quarterback, it's to win. And so whatever gets you there, gets you there. You know, at, when you win a Super Bowl, they don't say, Oh, this was really good when you did this. Oh, this is really good. No, they say congratulations to the Super Bowl champion. You know, and they don't say congratulations to your pocket passer or congratulations to your, your scrambler. They say congratulations to the Super Bowl champion. And, and I, I get it. You know, 
we have Cam Newtons, we have Lamar Jacksons, we have, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes. You know, at times we have uh, Russell Wilsons, you know, Aaron Rodgers. But there's still a lead that has a Tom Brady. And then there's still a lead. You know, it wasn't that long ago Peyton Manning was just throwing the ball around the yard. And Phillip Rivers just retired. Just retired. And who are who they? Lamar Jackson, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Just about everybody in the league is now dual threat. Cam Newton. There's still other teams who have guys. Uh, that Minnesota has a pocket passer. Right. And so I think people tend to forget that that even though it's one of the biggest, not one of it's the biggest position to take care of, there's still 10 other people on the field. And granted, the quarterback has the ball in his his hands about a good, I want to say, 70 to 75% of the time the ball is in play. But it's incumbent upon the other 10 people to do their jobs. And for the other 11 people in different uniforms to stop them. And so has the age of the pocket passer gone? No. But... Can we say it's around fully? Absolutely not. Okay, I, I, I got your answer. And and here's the here's the reason why I posed the question. As we looked for the last, you know, let's say, let's go with the last half decade, five years. Obviously, we know of the Philip Rivers, we know of the Drew Brees, we know of the Tom Brady's. Those guys who can stand there in the pocket, scan and make the decisions and get the ball distributed to the, to the right receiver at the right time. The problem that we were facing now with the game is when the play breaks down, those guys being able to make plays with their legs and put even more pressure on the defense. Mm -hmm. that, here, the, the reason I posed this question once again was because in the last half decade, you had, you know, obviously your Tom Brady's, your Drew Brees's, your, your Philip Rivers, as you speak, and um, I can't think of his name. His name escapes me up there in Minnesota, Kirk Cousins. And these guys, and also, um, Lord have mercy, um, Atlanta's quarterback. Those guys have been great. They've done a great job, and, you know, they're distributing the ball to, their, to the receivers as they need it to be. But when the play breaks down, they, they're, they're, they weren't as much of a threat to hurt the defense. You know, sometimes you could see them get five or ten yards but there weren't a guy that, that you had to account for in the defense. You know, like you didn't have to leave a spy for that particular guy. If you look what Tampa did in their game, they left a spy for Mahomes, and certain teams do that. They do, and because and that makes the defense stressed even more, especially if that dual threat quarterback is an accurate passer on top of that. Um, so we're looking at as we're going into the draft. Just say 10 years ago, with the season that Mac Jones had, he probably would be a no-doubt top five pick, if not the number one pick in the draft, based on the fact that he could scan the field, distribute the ball to receivers, and he didn't run. He left. He stayed in the pocket. Now these coaches are demanding that these guys be a little bit dual threat. That was the reason I'm posing the question, because prior to this de decade and generation of quarterback, those guys would have been – push down the push down the draft board because of the fact that they wouldn't stay in the pocket. And until these guys have recently woke up and understand the value of having a guy who could stretch the defense and get that first down by running with it. Um, these guys are really getting more and more valuable nowadays. The game has changed, which makes their value go up and has it devalued and ended the the reign of the pocket passer. I will say no that they will never die as long as you can have a guy who can sit in the pocket and make those balls on time. You, that's, to me, usually where the game is designed to be the preferred way, but that means everything is clicking like you need it to be when you got a guy who can sit in the pocket and, and distribute. Obviously, that's the way you want your, your offense to go. But the thing about it is when you got a guy who can do both, it, it, it makes your job easier. And I think that's one of the coaches are starting to understand and figure out we need to make our job easier because what happens if your guy's not having a great day? Um, just case in point, we understand back in the day, 2017, Blake Bortles, who nobody will mistake as a great passer. 
but won a playoff game here against the Buffalo Bills by using his legs. Made one or two touchdowns. Well, I think he threw a touchdown pass, but at, he probably he outrushed uh, his passing yard. He had more rushing yards in his pass, and they won a playoff game with that. Obviously, Tim Tebow did that. But the difference was those guys weren't accurate with their passing. Now you're trying to get guys like Patrick Mahomes, who's accurate with his passing and can run the ball. And he does some phenomenal things, like he can be laying down horizontal and throw an accurate pass. So these guys have been coming more and more valuable, and because of their athletic ability, with along with the improvement, especially with a lot of the specialized training these guys have gotten as they were getting younger, their accuracy and being like such great athletes has really, really brought their value up. Um, even to the point Lamar Jackson, even though he's not the most accurate passer, the fact that he can do so much with his legs has made him valuable. The fact that Cam Newton still was able to keep a job, even though he hadn't shown to be the most accurate passer. New England thought that they saw something in him and besides him wanting to go back, that they figured that they can build the offense around him, if not but temporarily, but they're, they, they, there's something for them to work with there because he can do both things. So I'm... Mac Jones is, and, and, and Kyle Trask also has seemed to be, you look at their numbers the last two years, what they did as starting quarterbacks, 10 years ago, they'd be the two people we'd be talking about in the draft. This year, there's conversations, well, how far will they go up in the draft? Mac Jones, can, can he be a 50, uh, top 25 pick? You know, would he be a first round pick? Well, well you know, well, if Kyle Trask hadn't had that bad get bowl game against Oklahoma, He'd probably be a first day. I mean, he'd probably be in the first round right now. I think that really hurt him. But again, we'll see what happens on this pro day because he did put up such good numbers. And one of the things people, people do look at his bat bowl game was bad. But if you look at the, the SEC championship game, he put on a magnificent show in that game. So some GM is probably that we're not hearing now is going to be really, really high on him that still wants a pocket passer. So that's the reason I'm asking about that because – there are some people that still that uh, finally open their eyes to the fact that you need a dual throw dual quarterback dual threat quarterback, but is there still room for the pocket passer? And is it the guy? Excuse me. Is it the is that the type of guy you will build your franchise around? Will you make that guy your franchise player? Because the one thing about him not being dual threat that makes more pressure on your 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 skilled players to have to be that much better. Because he can't take the pressure off of him with pressure off of him with his legs, so we, we I thought we, I think we kind of handled that. You can give me your last um, get your last thoughts on that, and we'll go forward. No, I mean I, I totally agree with you. Um, my my take on it is, at the end of the day, a win is a win. Uh-huh. Um, there's no. I've yet to see a win in the NFL where there's like a ast- uh, a legal asterisk. <laughs> you know, you know yes. we, we as fans or media might feel like, oh, they might have won had they done this, you know, or might might not have lost. They did this, but no one cares. It's still a W. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, as long as they're winning, you can stay in the pocket all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, how long has Tom Brady been in the league? 21, 22 years. I'm just saying, people. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. So we, we I think we kind of, we kind of said, I'll, I'll just say that it's not totally dead, but it's, they're on the back burner. They're, those type of guys are on the back burner, but they haven't died. There's still a place for them if they can make plays with their arm and their brain. Um, let's go on to something that's really kind of, you know, I ain't going to, for the lack of a better phrase, kind of troubled me as we, what's going on around the league. Um, it's not because it's a, a league problem. It's a personal problem. And you see it, you know, every few years, especially um, lately, where we get these troubled players um, doing things that make you scratch your head. Case in point, this 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 weekend, Isaiah Wilson, the former first round pick of the Tennessee Titans, who Titans sit, traded to the Dolphins, I think, in the same week for a song and dance, a couple of seventh round pick, and he was in just last year's draft. Um, he suddenly finds himself out of the NFL, and the things that I've heard and talked and people have talked about is the the young man's behavior is just totally out of bounds, you know? And I mean, people had a kind of inkling of it when they, they were looking at what the, the incident that happened with his mother and I guess the girlfriend after the draft, during the draft, you know? So um, 
when you get players like that, or then, or when you have somebody like Antonio Brown who has some behavior, some serious behavior issues, jumping around from team to team, or you have some of these other players lately, um, Alden Spliss just comes to mind. Um, oh Lord, and I can't think of the, the receiver with the uh, that's been jumping around now, even with Seattle with the Browns. You have so many of these guys that you you know, even in Jacksonville, we had our share of them, and you wonder why can't these guys get it together when they're when they got millions of dollars life-changing money that they can take care of themselves and their families for the rest of their lives and their lives and they don't seem to make the right decision or they can't control themselves enough to make the money to take care of themselves in the long term and i just you know we just find it troubling and how you can what what can be done to help these type of people or can there anything to be done to help these type of people? Because you have that in all aspects of, of, of this society where some people you just can't help. And I'll, take your, I'll get your take on it, see what you say. Um, Hamilton said, that's why you got to <laughs> watch the play. Man, I'm telling you, oh my God. If you watch the play, you'll, you'll understand this analogy that I'm using. Okay. Uh, in, in Hamilton's story, it's a true story about, you know, Alexander Hamilton. Rich, just became treasurer second, the first treasurer secretary uh, of the United, United States. United States. You, you came from nothing. You married to one of the richest families in in, in the your new country, mm-hmm. and you go cheat on your wife. <laughs> Anyways, I, I mentioned that to say, I, let, let's 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 un, unpack this just for a little minute here. Let's take race out of it. Throw that away. White and black doesn't really matter here. Let's take upbringing out of it. Throw that away. Because honestly, that matters not here as well. Let's just specifically look at it from a socioeconomic standpoint. Okay. I get out of college. I'm a junior or a senior. I'm probably 20 or 21 years old. And... You know, uh, granted, rookies aren't making what they used to make about about six or seven years ago, but I'm still low key a millionaire. And my first game check that that gets deposited into my account has more zeros than I saw on the test that I used to fail in high school. <laughs> you have two choices. Save it or blow it. Save it or blow it. And the NFL now has mandated since the, the speech that uh, Michael uh, 88 gave. Michael his, Irvin. Michael Irvin gave at his Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony. They, the men, they have the rookie symposium. Every year. Every rookie, whether Drafted or undrafted, you are in the league, has to attend this rookie symposium where you get told by former players, current players, people who are down on their luck. Executive staff, all that. Financial advisors. Uh, financial literacy, behavior, and how to stay relevant whether you're on the field or off the field. Listen, and, and, I, and I get your point to, to what can be done. Here's the thing. Nothing. Nothing. We have failed in this country, not even just football, but we failed when we tried to police morality. We tried it, you know, uh, the the way back when, when we tried to uh, have pro, uh, prohibition. And, hey, you can't drink. And if you get, if you get caught with liquor, you're doing time. That blew up in America's face. Uh, we tried it. They tried it. Marijuana. With marijuana. The, you know, marijuana. You know, they, they police morality with the rules against Jim Crow or racism. We can't do it. We, we, we can't. You'll fail every time when you try to police morality. And, and, and yes, there is a quote-unquote right and wrong, but at the end of the day, our biggest failure as humans is the fact that we have the opportunity of choice. And so because of that humanity, there are some people who are going to do right 
and there's some people who are going to do wrong. Again, as Hamilton said, it doesn't matter who lives, who dies, it's who tells your story. So, can there be anything done? Absolutely not. You know, we we live in a world where 20, 21 year olds, based off the talent that they can display, that they have displayed on Fridays and Saturdays, will now get to be paid to display that talent on Sundays. We give them all this money because I absolutely they deserve it. They're putting their body on the line for our pure entertainment. But at the end of the day, they have the choice to either do right or do wrong. And as long as they have that choice, which will be until the end of humanity, they're either going to make the right choice or the wrong choice. You're right. You're right. I had to stop and just kind of digest that in as you finish that, you know. It's all going to be choice, just like in everything else that we do in this world and society. Um, he could have made the choice to go seek help instead of doing what he needed to do. And I'm pretty sure both of those organizations did what they could do to try to help this young man make the right decisions because they spent a ton of money, at least the, the uh, Tennessee Titans did, by, and they spent a first-round draft pick with huge personnel capital to make sure that they had a player and they thought that could be one of their staples for the next five to 10 years. And they lost on that. They lost on that. So they've been set back. Um, the problem that I find out with it is, is people tend to get grouped into these things. And I know it's not a racial issue per se, but you know, people who are looking for a reason to keep a certain people down, use that as a reason. See, this is why we don't do them. This is why we don't do that, you know, because of, look at, see, this is why they point to that. Even though it has nothing really to do with that, because that's an individual person decision. It has no meaning on what the whole of a person, of people do. And the sad part about it is, with all the resources that these guys have in major college football, all the resources they definitely get in the NFL, that they don't take advantage of it for the most part. Um, and so, you know, as fans and as people outside media, people looking at it, you get, you get, you're sad, but you also get frustrated because you'd like, if I would have been in that situation, this would not have happened. You know what I mean? And, but you get to, like I said, once again, that's, these are, these are not every player in the league. These are just those few players and they get, they get the attention because of the circumstances, because of the way they are. So, you know, what can be done, maybe a little bit more awareness, but at the end of the day, just like you said, no matter where you came from, your upbringing, at a certain age, you, have, you know right from wrong, and you have, you have to make the right decisions for, what's your, for your future. And if you don't, you have nobody to blame but yourself. So we're going to move on from that, because I don't like to be down. I like to have our show upbeat. I like to keep things on, but I wanted to make sure we touched on that issue. All right, here's another one that, that we want to talk about here. But before we do that, I want to just talk and, and, and tell everybody, if you're enjoying our show, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to our channel and support us. Also, please support, I don't know if you see behind me, I got the, our, our, our lovely sponsors, Team Sports Rhetoric, Watch Game Film, She Car, along with the um, Women's Tackle Football League and Laces Out. And my illustrious co-host, all, all Sports High, please um, just go ahead and support these beautiful companies. They do a great job supporting us, and we want to make sure that we take care of them as they take care of us. Um, let's let's get back to let's get back to some some things here, man. We're talking about this leads into why. How do what is the reason teams miss on players? Whether they miss on them, let's let's do, we, we're going to break it down in two things real quick. We're going to talk about why teams miss on when they go into free agency, why a free agency a free agent doesn't work out, and secondly, why they miss when they're drafting different players, especially when you're talking about. Matter of fact, we're going to flip it up. We're going we're going to just continue with this because Isaiah Wilson was a first round pick for, for the Tennessee Titans, and what did they miss? that would have caused them to change their mind on making this selection because they, they made a selection to get a guy and they run the ball. And so he was going to be a valuable part of what they do. He was a guy that was supposed to pave way away for Derrick Henry to continue doing his thing and to protect, um, protect them in the passing game. So he was, he was counted on and he came from Georgia, which was supposed to be a team known for running the ball. 
And so that was one of his fortes. And for him to just take this opportunity and just basically toss it out the window, you know, you, yes, you blame the player, but you also have to give some criticism to the organization. Did you not see the signs? Did you not do enough research? So we want, and, and this did, obviously the Titans are not the first one. New England's in their situation right now because they made some notorious bad, bad drafts the last few years. The Jaguars' history of making some bad tra- draft picks. You know, you, you, you select a punter over Russell Wilson, you know, just, just, to, <laughs> just to make one case in point. So I'm going to hear what you got to say on this because I, I, can, I can go all day on this. I'm going to start with a, uh, How much kind of a uh, weird, weird, weird statement, but I promise you I'll explain it. I don't think any team misses on a player. Really? They, they don't. It, it, and here's why. Right. When you get one of those big jigsaw puzzles, right? And you and you, you open it up and you throw it on the floor and you get ready to put this puzzle together and you get a few pieces here and now you start to see a picture and then you get this one piece where you're trying to put it here but it, it, it's not really working. Uh-huh. And you get another piece right here and, 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 you, and you, it's not really working. That's literally the NFL draft and NFL free agency. I use you know Isaiah for instance, great player coming out of college. Like you said, running back supposed to help keep Derrick Henry off the field just a little bit so he can keep coming back in and pounding the ball. Here's the thing where people, the average fan and even some media members tend to forget about the NFL. You play football, and when I say play football, I'm encompassing film study, workouts, you know, game planning, all of that stuff. Even meals. Practice meals. You play football as an NFL player on average about eight to nine hours a day. After that, there's life. And I think people tend to forget that. And what encompasses life is means there's a drive home. If you got a family, you got to take care of family. If you, whatever city you in, there's a light, there's a nightlife, there's uh there's girls, there's women, and whatever. And I think we as fans and media members tend to forget that that is a piece of the NFL. So what I mean by that when I say people NFL players, I mean NFL teams don't miss on anybody is and I use the analogy of the, the jigsaw puzzle, that piece just didn't work with your puzzle. I'll use the, the example with Justin Blackman and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Justin Blackman coming out of o- Oklahoma State was a stud. His preseason was probably the best preseason you can have for a receiver. And even at the time, they had Blaine Gabbard at QB it looked like a beautiful matrimony in heaven. But but here's the thing. NFL scouts do their due diligence. And I, I, I've seen it as an intern and I've seen it at work. They will study, go over your life as if they're an FBI agent. But at the, there's a component that we don't know about. And we forget about that. Once you draft a player, boom, they come to your city, boom. That's the part we we don't we can't measure. You can't when you, when you when you take that player out of that college environment where they have coaches, trainers, professors all on them twenty four hours of a day. You t- you pluck them out of that that environment. Boom! Now you're a grown man because they didn't get to be a grown man in college. I think people forget about that. You don't get to be a grown man in the NFL. I mean, in college football. You get to be a grown man once you get drafted. You know what I mean? And so there's a a component that we forget about. Now, are there measurables and stuff that, you know, some scouts may miss on? Yeah. But every piece might not work for every puzzle. We saw it. I I used the – Let's take the both running backs that came out of USC with Reggie Bush and Lynn. Lindell White. Lindell White. Reggie Bush, his his transition into New Orleans was almost perfect. They ended up at the Super Bowl. Lindell White's transition into Tennessee wasn't so great. 
because what? He got plucked out of college, and now you got to be a grown man. And I and I say so we don't NFL don't does not miss on players because they got it right. The guy that they drafted, the guy that they recruited, the guy that they they picked up in free agency, they got it right. The problem is the pu- the puzzle piece didn't fit with the puzzle once they got next to the puzzle. Every piece looks good once we hold it up like this, like, eh, 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 but then when you put it down into the puzzle, oh, that doesn't go there. I got to move it around. Oh, it doesn't go there. Up, oh, I got to move it around. Up, oh, it doesn't go there. Look at Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill career was over a few years ago. Matter of fact, Ryan Tannehill career was over at Texas A&M. Because if you guys remember, he got taken off of the out of the quarterback room and got told to go to the receiver room. No, it was the rece- opposite. Okay, and see what I'm saying? But, but my point to is every puzzle piece doesn't work for every puzzle. Sometimes it's, you know, everyone say, uh, say success is opportunity meeting luck. And, and sometimes it works out like that. You know, and, and you look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady coming out of college, that puzzle didn't fit nowhere. That puzzle, that puzzle didn't fit nowhere. If Drew Bledsoe didn't get cracked back on the sideline in 2001 or, or 2000, would there be a Tom Brady? You see 2001. You was right. It was 2001. 2001. So would there be a Tom Brady as we know him now? You see, you see what I'm saying? He might be the Tom Brady we know now a few years later when Drew Bledsoe retired. But see, every puzzle piece doesn't fit for every puzzle. So, no, in my, in my personal opinion, no NFL team can actually miss this. They might have, you know, jumped the gun sometimes, or they might have held back too much. But no team actually misses because that puzzle piece just might not work for their puzzle. I'm considering what you're saying, and I'm I'm, I'm digesting and trying to understand it. I see it differently. Because it's it's just like we're results driven, okay. And if it doesn't matter, if it doesn't happen, and the results don't happen, you're ultimately responsible. So it's your fault. You know what I mean? You did the research, as you said. You did the due diligence with the scouting and department. And some of the times, against the the advice of your scouts, you pick a guy anyway. Or you pick totally for need instead of taking the best player available. And your philosophy does not fit what you're trying to do with this sport. Um, give you an example. And to me, that's one I say. The reason I say that is because if you look at it, especially in the NFL, you have teams that seem like year in, year out, they're always competitive. Case in point. Your Pittsburgh Steelers, always competitive. It would, maybe some years they don't make the playoffs, but nine times out of ten, they're in the playoff hunt and they're making the playoffs. Um, then again, you have your Detroit Lions, just to, as an example of what not to do. I mean, they've had some Hall of Fame players come through that through those prints, and I can't count on the hand on my hand the playoff wins. <laughs> you know. You, you can count on, excuse me, you can count on one hand, less than five fingers, the playoff wins in my lifetime that they, they, they had. And I've known at least three Hall of Fame players that come through that, you know, since that organization, since I've been on this planet. And you look at those teams and you're like, why do they continuously lose? And why do these teams continuously win? And it's got to be a way. Success leaves breadcrumbs. So at the end of the day, you give you hit let's let's just even make it even point point. Matthew Stafford, one of the better passers in the NFL, was not able to have much of a career source winning and losing in Detroit, putting all those stats up to the point that the LA Rams, who had a quarterback that take that took them to the Super Bowl, they traded him away for this guy. Now, what they see in Matthew Stafford that they don't see in 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 um okay this name Goff. just yeah Jared Goff totally totally baffles me because he's the guy you picked 
number one overall. The whole goal of picking a quarterback number one overall, obviously, is to win a Super Bowl. But getting you to a Super Bowl means you succeeded. Now, you didn't win the game, but you got to that game. And you've been in the playoffs even as much as last year. And all of a sudden, you think a guy who has not elevated his own franchise that he came from to playoff wins is going to do better than the guy that you supposedly put all this time in and scouting and knew him and all the whining and dining and won with. And you think you're going to get an upgrade? Okay, we'll, we'll see. We will see. Um, like I said, success leaves breadcrumbs. And the best way you usually indicate somebody's future is kind of looking at their past. Um, and far as I know, I can't remember Matthew Stafford ever winning anything since high school. Just well, no, no knocking on it. And I mean, this is, we're not going to make this a Matthew Stafford. Um, no, 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 no. We're, we're talking about success of how these teams, whether they make and why you're, you're, you're thinking about, okay, just, just give you another point. The, the, the New England Patriots had the GOAT. For whatever reason, they thought, you know, he still did, he doesn't have enough in it to, to keep him around, to offer him or whatever he wanted to do to make him want to stay. Um, maybe then I could be wrong. Maybe he just said, Tom said, you know, I just had enough. Regardless of what y'all offer me, I'm gone. Okay, that's something you can't control. But you look at these guys and you wonder why these teams go from this, from point A to point B, because of the decisions that they make. That's why I'm saying you saying that there's no they don't make mistakes when they pick these guys. I, I, I can I can understand what you're saying from the scouting that they did their due diligence and it just didn't work out. But a majority of the time, the flags, the red flags were there and you decided to do you decided to do the D anyway. Um, case in point, let's go here here and locally. The Jaguar Jaguars knew all there was to know about a young man named R.J. Sauer. They knew his history of drinking. They knew some of his history of what he acted on the field. But they wanted that third receiver deep threat to get them over the hump they thought to get to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Smith and Keenan McCardo, that they decided to gamble on that. And it failed miserably. Guess who suffers? The organization, the fans, because they had, they, the, the, I mean, the fans mostly, because they have nothing they can do but sit there and watch. You look at these teams, you look at the general managers that we had in the past. We had one general manager who thought he was smarter than everybody, and he always liked to pick small school guys. Nothing wrong with small school guys, but you just do not build your roster based on those guys, trying to find a diamond in the rough. If it's obviously out there, you pick the talent. Give you an example. I mean, we had a decent punter here, and we decided to spend a third-round pick on a punter when there was much higher-rated guys to be had. And we decided we're going to go with the punter because that was, you know, like I said, these are these. That's why I went and posed this question. You know, the reason why these teams miss on players It's nobody asks your question when the guy when you hit on a player because you hit because if it was and if that was so crazy, they, they, they would have drafted Tom Brady in the first round instead of six round. They would have drafted Terrell Davis in the first round instead of six round. James Robinson would have got would have got drafted, you know, earlier. You know, I would have gotten drafted, period, if all these teams know James Robinson was going to be the dang near thousand yard back. He would he might not end it with the Jaguars if they would have saw these things. So that's why I put these questions to that that that, that make, you know, that's why we asked pose this question. But but, see, but that's my point. And, and history is, is you have 2020 vision with it. And, and that's why I led with teams don't miss on players. They get it wrong a lot. But because we have the the opportunity to look back and say, this guy worked here, this guy worked there, I can't say Russell Wilson would be Russell Wilson in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say James Robinson would be James Robinson in a New England Patriot offense. I can't look back and say, however, Russell Wilson being drafted by the Seattle Seahawks, where he was drafted, turned out beautifully. For them, yeah. For them. And I can't say James Robinson, you know, falling to the Jacksonville Jaguars was a blessing in disguise for James Robinson. But we also, but like I said, certain puzzle pieces work certain puzzles. 
And if you don't have the, when your puzzle turns out perfectly, it works perfectly. You have the beauty to say, hey, I did it right. <laughs> Bruce Arians has the beauty of saying, I did it right. Y'all kiss my behind. Uh -huh. I bet yeah. it was an old guy and, I, and I, it, I, it paid dividends. Okay. But if you lose that bet, like so many teams have, of course you're going to say, hey, well, I should have did this, I should have did that. There's not a coach that, that exists in the world that won't psychoanalyze himself and say, damn it, if I wouldn't have just did this on this down, we might have won. Uh -huh. when, we, when we look back, you have the you have the ability to have twenty twenty vision. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah, be, because you know it doesn't matter who lives, who dies, it's who tell the story. You're gonna watch this play. I am gonna watch it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna sit down and watch it probably on Sunday evening just to make sure I got I get a chance to watch it. Though, make sure I get this um, get the reference done. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to our very last topic. It just falls right into place. Thank God, right the way I did this set up this whole show today <laughs> just to keep my tell myself on the back um the question that I pose is what is more important measurables the players measurables or the film now I, I'm going to tell you what I think but that's the question where we're going to we're going to discuss what's more important when you're evaluating a player the measurables or the film we know both of them are somewhat important but what is more important some teams, if you go and look out there, let's go back to here in Jacksonville. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Matt Jones in the first round. Matt Jones was a six foot six, four three forty running quarterback that converted to wide receiver. And the Jaguars fell in love with a guy that big, that fast. Um and it failed. He had a little bit of success, but one of the things they didn't did, didn't consider was the behavior off the field and the love of the game on the field, not to mention the transition of positions. He went from playing a running quarterback to a wide receiver that didn't really know the route tree, how to run it. He knew about it, but didn't know how to run it. And they put a premium on what a guy looks like in, a, in shorts and didn't really evaluate the film and project him moving and how he would do to watch to a wide receiver. And I'm sure some of that's their fault because they didn't coach him up right either, but it didn't work out because of, but had he been six foot one, you know, 195 pounds moving from quarterback to wide receiver, would he been that first round pick? I say no, because he wouldn't have been the guy that they would have been drooling over looking at his body type. Um, you see a lot of guys in the, in the NFL that get drafted on these different same things because you look at these guys and they say, this guy is six, this defensive end is a six foot six defensive end, 265 pounds. He ran a four, five, 40. So we can project him. But when you look at his film in college, he didn't flash hardly at all. But all of a sudden he went to and worked out in the combine. And he looks great. Case in point. And this is not him expecting, but Mike Mamula, Philadelphia Eagles, became a first round pick over his over his combine numbers and his measurables. So that's a different type of measure, not just his size, but also what he did. But his film didn't didn't add up. So I'll pose that to you. What's more important, the measurables or the film? You know, um, let me use another Hamilton reference here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, in the midst of Hamilton, they have a rap battle. Uh, the rap battle is staged as a conflict during a cabinet discussion. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of this cabinet rap battle, uh, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he basically calls out Hamilton, uh, his clothing, and you know how he's trying to change America's uh, credit situation. Hamilton rebuttals, 
with you know discussing about how Thomas Jefferson was never there for the American Revolution. He was in France, uh-huh. and how you know the fact that helping America get credit will eventually then turn in the long run. Again, I say with 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 all of our topics today. It's funny how that worked out. Doesn't matter who lives or dies. It's who tells the story. So, and, and you pose the question, which matters more? The, the, the measurables or the immeasurable, if you will. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, but to use your uh, example, you know, Matt Jones with the Jacksonville Jaguars. His last season was 2008. And he was drafted in 05. Um, if we look at just his last season, because actually his last season when he came on as a receiver until, you know, he got in off the field trouble. Let, let's look at this roster for, for just a brief second. Starting at quarterback, you had David Garrod, who, who's, who's doing all right, throwing that ball around the yard at the time, actually. Uh, you had Mojo in the backfield. And here's where the issue comes in. In the tight end room, you have Mercedes, Le- Mercedes Lewis. And Mercedes Lewis. I think he was just coming off of Pro Bowl, too. Yep. Then you had George Reister, mm-hmm. Richard Angulo, and Greg Estandia. In that wide receiver room, you had Nate Hughes, Troy Williamson, Dennis Northcutt and Mike Walker. Northcutt had was had a little bit of, of a success with the Cleveland Browns. Um, what was the other guy that got in that you told Mike me about? Wa- Mike Walker and Troy Mike, Williamson. Troy and- Williamson. Troy Williamson was a reclamation project from the Minnesota Vikings. Another former first round pick with a whole bunch of speed. Another measurable guy, you know, and so they figured they can get all this have themselves a little track team. No, no. And so, so, so I, 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 I answer using that uh, example because Matt Jones at best was a project. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got someone who spent a first round pick on a project when you're trying to make the playoffs. Yeah, but but hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because the question you what, pose the question again. What's more important, the measurables or the film? So. With that being said, there's a lot of things you can measure. And you have a circa, you know, circa short time to do so. The, the thing about the immeasurables, you can't measure until you get in person. You know, it, it, I, I always say free agency and drafting is like dating. I really don't know that girl until I see her stuff a burger in her mouth. Mm-hmm. And and so, granted, the the film tells one side of the story, but the immeasurables tell a whole other side of the story. And I use Matt Matt Jones as a uh, example because who would have known any of that? You know what I mean? Because because I, I can go ask your mama how you are behind closed doors. Your mama going to tell me a whole bald face lie if she know $18 million coming soon. And, you know, I, I can go ask your pastor how you are in church. He's going to tell me a bald face lie because he <laughs> will, you know them ties coming in quickly. Uh-huh. Well, ask your teacher and your principal how you were in class, and they're going to tell me a bald face lie because you're going to write a check to the <laughs> athletic program. And, and, and so you don't know these things until you get in the, the building. And then you have to also factor in everything in the circle that you're putting around them. Who in that room was getting ready to help Matt Jones in that wide receiver room? Mm-hmm. Was it Mike Walker? He was just get, getting his feet wet. And, you know, mm-hmm. he's been having an okay career, but what was it going to be Dennis Northcutt? Bro, you just left the Brown. Shut up. <laughs> and and, and, and and, and, and I say all of this and say, just a couple of years ago, I was, I sat in the media room as we 
for <laughs> interviewing Nick Foles, who just got signed to Jasper Jaguars for $88 million. Sitting next to me was my former program director, and he said to me, and I quote, that man gets hurt. It's the worst thing that'll ever happen to the Jaguars. And I was like, no, it's not. It's not. They just drafted this guy from Washington. I think he'll be all right. Everybody in the room laughed. Ah, Andre's the little producer. He's stupid. Kid having a kid ended up having a great rookie season. Came in second in the rookie of the year voting. And so I, you, you don't. And they ship the and they ship the eighty-eight million dollar guy off the next year. And, uh, listen, people, you don't know the measurables until you get the guy in the room. And, and so, that guy, and that and that now producer is all doing another show in games on that. I, I, you said it, not me. But listen, no, <laughs> no, no disrespect to it because he deserves where you're going. But I, you know, but listen, it's just the way I, things work out sometimes, right? Uh, and I, and, 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 and you, that little same is just the way things work out. And so, does it? What's my, what matters more, the film? Or the immeasurables. Listen, they both go hand in hand. And if you don't look at both, you're gonna screw yourself. I know. But me, I'm just gonna we're gonna end this show with these things. I'm a I've been doing this for a, a, a hot minute now. The measurables is like my resume. But what I mean, but I'm gonna go back and go to that work history. I'm gonna look at that tape. If that tape and the measurables don't add up, I'm moving on. I'm swiping right. I'm moving on. Because if they don't mesh up, something can happen. You 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 really taking a chance on whether that guy can do something. But if they measure up, then you know you got then then you can you can think of, uh, okay we can take a reasonable chance. But if they don't add up, and that's why I put so much more on the t- on the film because I always live by this motto: it ain't the size of the dog in the fight; it's the size of the fight in the dog. Yes. <laughs> so. That's why I always go with get show me the show me the the, the film because the eyes in the sky don't lie, like you just said, Mama lie, the preacher even lie, but that eye in the sky ain't gonna lie, and that'll tell you what they will do when the bullets is flying and the lights is on, and that to me is more important than what anybody looked like because we had some of the smallest guys that made some of the biggest impact in this game, and we had some. Some freaks of nature physically, they ain't do nothing. They look like Tarzan and played like Jane. And so the I, you go with the film regardless. And, and I don't even like these guys with these one-year wonders. If you can give me two, three years of good college tape, I ain't got to all be perfect over one year with a flash in the pants. I'm going with that. Like, give you an example. Everybody's all of a sudden talking about this kid from BYU. I never heard of him. Not that he can't play before this year. And he's athletic. He does all that. But. I, I see one year out of film against a, not the greatest level of competition. I'm sorry, based on what I've seen with the film, Mac Jones will be rated higher than this kid because at the level. Not saying that he won't work out, but I'm not going to take the risk on it because the film doesn't show me a history of him. I've seen Mac Jones for two years after he took over for Tua Tonga Valoa play at a high level, even though he's not the athletic guy. His film is better than the other. Carl Trask's film is better than a lot of these other guys, even though that he stands in the pocket. But, and the thing about both of those guys, they may not be athletic, but they are willing runners too. They will run the ball. They're just not as athletic as these other guys. Well, we're going to end the show right here, my brother. I appreciate all our fans. If you get a sentence, we're gonna, I will answer your comments. So, you know, hit that like and subscribe button. And you guys, until next week, stay tuned for us. What We're going to have another great show for you and be blessed out there. Thank you.